Hi, my name is Bernd and I made over $170,000 in the past five months trading with FTMO. In this video, I want to talk about how I became the number one trader for the biggest forex prop trading firm in the world. In fact, I was not only number one trader on the global leaderboard in one month, actually I was number one in November, December and January. Just FYI, the global leaderboard resets after each payout. Consequently, you have to climb up the ranks every single month. Before I jump into explaining my two-step mechanical process to find trade setups based on a trade I took in my FTMO account, I want to philosophize about the mindset of a professional trader. Because ultimately, both variables, strategy and mindset go hand in hand. When we discuss mindset, I don't want to focus on greed and fear now. Every one of you heard that so many times. I want to focus on the mindset of running a trading business. Trading is a business, a profession in fact, like any other profession in the world. But as a trader, you are your only employee, the only variable in the equation. Consequently, you're an entrepreneur. You're the owner of your business, a trading business. If you just start off trading with a small account, then you're running a startup. Nevertheless, it's a business. So you have to apply all the aspects of running a conventional business in your trading business slash startup to make it successful in the long run. But enough about mindset. We will definitely pick it up in another video. Let's focus on the charts and look into a trade I took with my FTMO account. Let's jump into the chart. All right, so today I want to show you how I trade stocks. In this case, obviously CFD stocks in my prop trading account. In my example, I traded Apple. I entered Apple on the 13th of October and closed it on the 18th of October. I held it over the weekend, so the active trading day holding period was roughly three and a half days and I made 18,000 US dollars on this Apple trade. Now, if you look at my charts, you see two different markets on my screen. To the left, top and bottom left, NASDAQ futures and to the right, top and bottom right you see Apple. Why? Because we have to use multi-asset correlation. Stocks, especially heavyweighted Nasdaq stock like Apple, affect the indices and also the equity indices affect the stocks. So bottom line, analysis-wise, when we trade stocks, the particular index here, the Nasdaq, they has to be sync with Apple, all right? So let's start with my step one of the analysis process and we look here at our fundamental proprietary forecasting tools to see whether we're going to be bullish, bearish or neutral on Apple. All right. So let me do full screen. Apple, you see here, we start with our seasonal forecasting tool. You see here. So what I'm doing, as I said, I entered on the 13th. I removed the future candles. So we kind of pretend that today is one day before I entered the trade. This was a set and forget trade obviously as well. So I set and placed it in advance and I let it play out. So here is we pretend today is the 12th, as I said, one day before we enter the trade. And what we see here, right, in terms of forecasting, it's forecasting that Apple is going to go higher, right, for a couple of days before it kind of first goes a little bit sideways, then down and then higher again. So it's our forecasting tool. It's anticipating that Apple from here, right? You see here, it's a little bit of zigzag, so it might go a little bit further down, but then it will go higher. All right. So the forecasting tool is telling us price is going to go higher. Now this is on Apple. As I said, Apple and Nasdaq should be sync. So now if we look at Nasdaq and look at our forecasting model here, full screen, we see also here, it's actually, we see here down here, look at this, we see that there's a bottom in place and we're gonna go higher until, well, also a couple of days as it looks like, you see here, couple of days here 
and then we maybe go a little bit lower again but then we have the bottom of all bottoms in place right and then we just gonna go higher from here all right so also here you see on the nasdaq it's actually going to be a bottom so as i said we have to be sync and our forecasting model here our seasonal forecasting model is showing us yes we are sync all right now this is only one of our proprietary forecasting tools. As you know, we have also a valuation model. And let's look at our valuation model here versus the treasury bonds, which is really, really important for stocks and equity indices. And what we see here, so now I remove this line. As I said, we are pretending today is the 12th, one day before I entered the trade. And look at this, we are undervalued, right? And undervaluation, as we remember from my previous video, if you haven't watched my previous YouTube video, we will put the link here um, in that video as well. Every time we are undervalued, you see here down here, undervalued, we get a nice move. Undervalued, look at this, what happens? We get a nice move. Undervalued here, we get a nice move. And sometimes we can even anticipate the bottom of all bottoms. Look at this, undervalued, and we're getting a nice move, right? And we are now undervalued again. So... So far, very bullish, but again, we use multi-asset correlations to add even more probability in our favor. So let's look at the NASDAQ here as well. And you can already, I think, imagine that the NASDAQ is definitely not overvalued here, but look at this, we are close to undervalued. You see, it's coming down and also here, when we are undervalued, you saw this on my previous video. Well, when we are undervalued on the NASDAQ, you can imagine what's going to happen. So in terms of our proprietary forecasting tool here, the valuation model and our seasonal forecasting tool, they are speaking the same language on NASDAQ futures and on Apple, which is important. And I want to show you also here we haven't, we haven't talked about this yet, right? Our smart money index, where we see what the retail traders are doing and what the big banks, the smart money, the big banks and institutions are doing. We see here the blue line up here, which means we will talk about this tool more specific in another video, but basically the blue line represents the smart money, the big banks and institutions. So when they're up here, they're in an extreme, they're extremely bullish. And when the red line, represents the retail trader who usually lose money right so and when they're down here they are bearish right so we want to trade against the retail traders and with the smart money with the banks and institutions so this is a little nugget this is the icing on the cake here so they are also in line here on the nasdaq so you see step one of the very objective analysis process is going through our proprietary forecasting tools and see whether we're going to be bullish, bearish or neutral. So we are definitely not bearish on, on Apple and we are definitely not neutral. So we are bullish. Perfect. So since we are bullish, now we can go to step two and time the market here in this case with supply and demand, right? So if I look at Apple daily, I want to show you here, we are coming down in a very nice drop base rally, right? Super high quality. And what is even better, if I look at the weekly chart, this is covered, right? By a weekly rally base rally, actually an overlapping drop base rally followed by a rally base rally, so level on top of level. So what we call here, so the daily is covered by the weekly. So it's basically, what we call it the big brother principle, big brother, small brother principle uh, rule is met. So even better here on Apple, right? So, and also supply and demand wise, just quickly, we should be sync with the NASDAQ. And if we look at the NASDAQ daily, also here we coming into a nice supply demand zone and a drop base rally. And guess what? Also here, if I look at the weekly chart, you see here in a fresh here rally base rally. We are just approaching it. Perfect, right? As we as we saw also 
perfect seasonal low. Look at this, how our tool is anticipating that. Um, it's, it's amazing. And, and now, well, we have also our step two analysis sync. Absolutely perfect, right? High probability trade setup here on, on Apple. Now, as we said, full screen one day later, let's add the candle. So when the trade was triggered here on the 13th, look at this, it came deep into the demand zone, right? It opened down here, deep into the demand zone, but still in the demand zone. And now let's check the candles till the 18th. And you see also here price nicely, nicely moved higher, right? So this was the Apple trade. Basically, you see the only thing that you had to do during that particular of time, no managing, no watching, only putting your stop loss to break even at some point of time. And that's it. So this is how a professional trading business operates clearly defined objective rules to time the market with supply and demand, a well-defined process in place to find high probability trade setups with low risk and high reward. And like any other business, I use proper risk and money management tools to manage my trade setup. And the best part, this was a set and forget and get a live setup where I made $18,000 in five days only. The only thing I had to do during those five days is to manage the trade once when I put my stop loss to break even. Other than that, I was just letting it play out according to my predefined set of rules and not letting emotions get in my way. All right, guys, thanks for watching. I wish you all the best with your trading.